All right, so this is the training progression video. Now, this video might be a little tough to follow because I'm gonna be going back and forth from the rear facing camera to the forward facing camera as there are some things I need to be doing on the whiteboard. So with that being said, let's get into it. What is training progression? And if you look at the word, which I will show you right now, as you can see, I wrote it on the board. The word progression, if you look closely, the prefix of the word is progress. So what this means is that this entire principle is based off of trying to progress, meaning to get better at whatever it is you're doing as it refers to training. And just for a little visual, I even gave you the highlighted version of what is the key term to know with regard to this training principle. So as I explained earlier, the training progression is basically to progress in training and uh, physical activity. Basically, you're trying to get better at it, which could be in the form of maybe getting stronger, seeing more bodily changes, like increased muscle mass, less body fat, having better endurance, and being able to lift the same weights for more repetitions. How is progression used in regards to exercise and training? It's used because you need to gradually increase the workload for improvements to continue. So what this means is that as you keep progressing and getting better at things, that's when you're gonna continue seeing more results. So it just helps you improve your fitness and just helps you get better in the weight room. So why is progression important to use? And so steady improvements in training are necessary for your body to continue to adapt to the training goals. Um, I'll go over, go over this a bit more in the next overload video, but basically you have to keep kind of pushing your body to make progress. And progression is also useful for increasing motivation to stick with physical activity. So what this means is when people are being active and they are noticing that they're able to, maybe they're able to no, do no pushups before, but now they can do two, or maybe they only be able to jog one lap of the gym and now they can jog two laps of the gym. Progression is really helpful for increasing motivation because once you see that you're getting better at things, then you want to keep doing them because you feel good at it. And if you feel good at it, then you're more likely to like it. So progression is going to be helpful for keeping people doing physical activity long term because when people feel like they're getting better and good at things, they're more likely to stay with it. What are the negative consequences of not using progression with your training? Kind of similar to all the other ones, if you don't use this training principle, it's going to result in, uh, you might not see any changes or results. With training, if you're not progressing or you're not using progression, then you might not see any changes or results from what you're doing. This is going to, I'm going to explain this a bit further in detail in the next clip, but basically if you are not keeping track of what you're doing and you're not making efforts to get better at it and beating it, then you are going to just kind of hit a peak called a plateau. And then after a while, you might not be able to get past a certain stage of fitness. And so here are a couple ways that you can improve or use the concept of progression. So the very first and foremost, the most important one that I think is tracking your training data. So what I mean by that is that you are recording what weights you did at which sets and repetitions and maybe even how hard they felt using the RPE scale that we described in the intensity video. If speaking from personal experience, when I first started working out, I never did this and I regret it so much to this day because I feel like there was quite a few uh, lost years of training for me. So although I was at the gym and I was having a blast and I was working out with my friends, I wasn't tracking my data and I kept hitting what's called a plateau, meaning I didn't really get any better at anything. Like I wasn't building more muscle and I wasn't getting any stronger. And a big reason that I wasn't achieving these things is because I wasn't tracking my data. I was just going into the gym and oh, I think I'm gonna do this today. So the biggest thing I can say for sure is making sure you're logging or tracking your training data. You can do this by having a pen and paper, like a little notebook I've seen people use, or people can actually do it on your, their phones. Um, you can have like an Excel spreadsheet in your phone that you can write in the exercises and what weights you did, which sets and repetitions and stuff like that. It's really all preference up to you how you want to track your data, 
but just making sure that you're doing it because otherwise you could be missing out on some big missed things. The second thing you could do would be to increase the overall weights of the exercise. So this is pretty simple. Let's say you are doing a squat and you just have the bar on your back. And then if you, once you're feeling able to do more, then adding maybe even two and a half on each side and now the bar weighs five pounds more. And then after that, maybe adding five pounds on each side, now the bar weighs 10 pounds more. So increasing the weight is always a good way to help you progress, but you do need to make sure that you're doing things with the correct form and that you're not picking weights that are outside of your strength levels. Another thing you can do is you can add more sets and repetitions. Now this can be done, uh, you don't even have to increase weight to do this, you could just pick a certain weight and then just focus on increasing the overall sets and repetitions that you're doing for that particular exercise. So I will quickly show you a on the smart board here what that's going to look like to increase the sets and repetitions on your training. Alright, so as you can see here, I have a couple of different sets and repetition schemes. So just for the purposes of this uh, demonstration here, let's just say that you're doing the same weight on, let's say, uh, a, a squat, okay? So over here, you've got three sets of eight. So after the time you've done three sets of eight, you have literally completed 24 repetitions of that exercise. So in this case, a squat. So one way you can progress without having to add more weight would be to increase the repetitions as we see going to the right here. So what you could do is you start with the uh, three sets of eight and then once that feels too easy, if you wanna challenge yourself and progress a bit more, you could try three sets of 10. So now you're doing the exercise 30 times instead of 24. You're still progressing because you're able to move that same amount of weight uh, six more times. And then once you have finished that, then you can move your way over to the other side, the far right, three sets of 12. So again, you're let's say you're keeping at the same weight and you decide, okay, uh, I'm not ready. Maybe you're not ready to move up in weight, but you wanna progress. What you can do is add more reps. So now you're doing three sets of 12. Now you are total, in total, you're doing 36 repetitions of that movement. So even just from the beginning here, just from three sets of eight to three sets of 12, you're already doing 12 more repetitions of the same weight. That is pretty good progress if you ask me. Now, you could keep going on and on to the right here, but I'm gonna show you the sets now. So let's say you go and you're done and you're gonna go from the uh, three sets of 12 all the way down to now you're increasing the sets. You're going four sets of 10. So you're doing four sets of 10 squats now, that gets you doing the squat 40 times. And then once you have fit that, then you can progress on to four sets of 12, which would have you doing 48 repetitions. So this scheme can go on all day, but I'm just here to, just using this to show you that you don't have to increase the weights to progress. You can just modify the sets and repetitions. And as you can see, you are constantly getting better with each individual change in the repetitions because you're able to do more of them at that same weight. Another thing that you can do to make sure that you're progressing is to actually decrease your rest between sets. So what that means is let's say you have a two minute rest between your squats and you or between sets of your squats, maybe decreasing that rest time to one minute and 30 seconds. So even just a slight little decrease in rest is gonna make the exercise a little bit harder on your body and that is also going to help you progress further. That's gonna help, you know, with, uh, that could help boost your cardiovascular health. The next thing you can do is you can change the tempo. And so what I mean by change the tempo is the time it takes you to do an exercise. Tempo is, let's say I want you to lift the weight up for one second and then down for one second. So how that would look, let's say I'm doing a bicep curl, I would go one second up and one second down. One way you can progress in an exercise uh, without having to increase the weight is actually modifying the tempo. So what that could be is you could maybe, maybe you decide you're gonna do two seconds up, two seconds down. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, one, 1,000, two, 1,000. Even just a little bit of focus on how long it takes you to do an exercise is gonna make the exercise more challenging and thus help you progress further with that particular training goal. The next thing you could look at is increased range of motion. That's what I wrote for wrong, range of motion. So that's just kind of like, how well are you actually executing the movement? So for example, with the squat, you can increase your range of motion. So a lot of people, when they first start squatting, 
they will not get as deep as they possibly want. They, they might not know how deep to go, so they may only go a quarter of the way down. And as you get more comfortable with the exercise, you could look at increasing your range of motion to maybe uh, a half squat. And then once you're comfortable at that, then you can increase it to a full range of motion squat, which would be your hips basically beneath the where your knees would be. So you should look like a baby when you're doing it. So increasing the range of motion on certain exercises is also a way to help you make sure that you're progressing. And the last one, which really should be up there with training, uh, tracking your training data, is having perfect form. So what I mean by that is making sure that for every single repetition of any exercise that you do in a workout, that you're doing it with the utmost perfect form. This can be tough, especially for people who are maybe lifting weights that are maybe outside of their strength level, but having perfect form is going to help you progress in the gym and it's gonna help you lift longer. So you're gonna be less likely to get injured because your body is moving that weight as safely as possible.